there are, I think I think like like the American alligator. Yeah. I think is basically like a frog with teeth. What? What? Let's go home. After I started using pros, I immediately noticed a difference in how shiny and smooth my hair became. I have been loving the results and I'm so glad I made pros a part of my hair care routine. Try it for yourself and get your healthiest hair in 30 days or your money back. Pros is so confident that you'll love your results that they're offering our listeners an exclusive trial offer so you can see the difference custom hair care can make. 50% off your first subscription order at pros.com slash wild. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash wild for your free consultation and 50% off your one of a kind formulas. Pros.com slash wild. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and use code WT9. New players get an instant deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. That's code WT9 only on DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 887-897777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 plus, physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per new customer must opt in and make minimum $5 deposits within seven days, 168 hours of registering new account max match $100 in casino credits, which require one time playthrough within seven days, 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash new player offer 2024. Welcome back to America, Lord DIY. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the pod. Um, this is in fact starting off as a Diglett episode. So Diggy is in fact present. If you want to hop over now from the audio version to the video, because he's looking Adorable. Honestly, these dogs have been so clingy since I got back maybe like eight hours ago. And no, it's been longer than that, like like 15 hours ago. And it is like they have not been pet in days, Jeremy. Okay, okay, What do you have to say for yourself and our sons? Well, I did, I was the first person to say when you got back yesterday. Yeah. The dogs, the pups, they need more than me. (laughs) Like I, well, and okay. And I'll contrast that by saying that I've been in a relationship before where I did 90% of the the maintenance and the everyday caretaking and loving just cause like mm-hmm. I was the only one there. Yeah. And uh, it, it was a very different, I will say it's a different feeling when you have dogs that I think do a better job of tiring each other out. Right. Where these do not. One of them will get excited for a 30 second period. Yeah. And that is almost never the same time that the no. other one's excited. Yeah. Almost exclusively. I say they're relatively low maintenance though. They, they are. Yeah. But, but um, like I, I went searching for a breed that doesn't require a ton of mental and physical stimulation. <laughs> Let's be fully honest. <laughs> because like when you get a dog like Zach and Maggie getting Bowie, getting a, um, what, what's freaking Bowie? A, good uh, boy? uh, a number one good boy, mm-hmm. a Australian shepherd, an Aussie, an Aussie. Like, you know what you're getting into. That dog is going to want to herd. It is in its blood. It is in its DNA. Where Yee. bull terriers, there are some crazy couch. ass bull terriers. There are some crazy ass bull terriers. That's so yeah. true. But I would say that couch, for the most part, is in a lot of bull terriers DNA. Yeah, like it's it's like an Olympic sport. They really love couch. Like Ken in Barbie, his job is beach. Moose and Diggy, their job is nap. Oh, oh, oh right, right again, Barbie. <laughs> right again, Barbie. <laughs> I loved that movie. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, okay, yeah. I I just I just think that there's a level of napping or a level of not. As we discovered- You move around too much is the yes. problem, is that you move around. Cause like I work in my office for, you know, a set amount of time or I'll read on the couch and then the dogs can settle around and near mm-hmm. where you're, you're, too, you're too flighty for them. We didn't realize until very recently, despite the fact that you've been walking miles a day. Right. Every day, for several exercise, times a day. intentionally. Right, that our steps, when as someone is not walking mm-hmm. for hours a day, well, I guess I am walking for hours a day because our steps are very close. I would say that there is, I would put money on the fact that there is probably a higher step count for individuals who have ADHD. Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's probably a direct correlation. But I think on the, conversely uh-huh. can also be a crazy low step count too. It just depends on the day. Depends on the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause I feel like there were times in your life a couple of years ago when you were maybe taking about 400 steps a day. 
that many. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like it was very two, few. from your office to the kitchen, mm-hmm. back to your office. And the bathroom's in the way, like on the way yeah, between exactly, those two. Right, and then into bed. Right. And that was about it. Right. And it's crazy that we're the first generation to have everything like tracked counted and like that. counted yeah. as we start adulthood. I love my aura ring. And aura ring, if I if you feel the need ever to uh throw money at us, I would love to be can you on guys the make us a, a thinner band? Ugh, I do feel that way as well too. It feels really chunky. Yeah. Like I didn't even bring it on the bachelorette trip because <gasps> I didn't want to get like, uh, one, I didn't want to know how many steps that I wasn't getting. Right. Um, I felt like it'd be unhealthy to walking. like be checking. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God, are you dreading going back into to walking? <sighs> kind of, yeah. Kind of. Have you thought about not doing it? No. Okay. All right. No. That's just checking. No, no. I wouldn't judge no. you. No, I, I have I? to. I have to. Um, But- I'm back for the bachelorette trip and I got back late last night and I feel like this is the perfect debriefing episode because I fell asleep within moments of coming home. Um, I not, don't know. But not not until Diggy ran out in the cutest way. Oh, it was so cute. So we don't have cameras in our house. Like some people have cameras that are like facing into like their living room and stuff like that. And which makes sense, you know, if you have kids and stuff. But for us yeah. that like, it, I don't know, we just feel like it's- uh, I think it's weird. I think it's a little weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all over the outside. But cameras on the outside. Yeah. And so in the garage, we also have cameras. Yeah. And so we got to watch Diggy. I got to watch Diggy back um, when I came home and he came galloping out of the kitchen into like the when garage. He heard, when he heard your voice, I could hear him go, I have some do this in the kitchen. Really? Yeah. He's probably like, thank God, a parent who is going to give me love. <gasps> That's mean. Take it back. I take it back. You love Diggy. I do love Diggy and <laughs> Moose. And Moose. In no particular order. No particular never order. Never have, never will. And right, exactly. I'm just making up for Diggy's lost time. I'm just gotta, I gotta, I gotta fit the first like eight years of love. Seven. In, seven years of love into the eighth and then carry on for the next eternity. Yeah. That's all. Um, the cat people are really, really disliking this podcast so far. Yeah, that's okay though. They'll be fine. Are you gonna ask me how my trip was? <laughs> <laughs> Although that is what a good host would do. Um, <laughs> You've never waited for me to ask you how That's something true. was or wasn't, yeah. but um, let's try to get ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys can stick around for this. Uh, let's try this. Go ahead. So you're back from your trip. Uh huh. Tell us about it. More specific. Try again. Try again. Ready? Throw me something. Oh, else. You mean, okay. Yeah. So you're back from your trip. Uh huh. Was it everything you thought it was going to be? <gasps> Great question. I'm so glad you asked. I shouldn't have pointed though. That was rude. Let's try it again. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. How the fuck was the trip? Ah, it was so good. It was perfect. It genuinely was perfect. I will be- it's weird. perfect. Were you there, Diggy? Was I there? Huh. Was Diggy there? How could it be perfect if we weren't there? Mm. Also, where's my shirt? Sorry, all right, you go ahead. I, I'll, I'll interject later. I'll inter- That's so nice. Yeah, where's my bracelet. shirt? Ah. Anyway, Lauren, I'd love to know how your bachelor trip was because I, I will say it looked perfect. It was perfect. Literally nothing major went wrong. We had like little blips and stuff here and there, but like not. Well, and what does go wrong? What was, what was gonna go wrong? I, I don't know. Like okay. if, if a car breaks down or something. Okay. Like stuff like that. Like we did get stranded at the grocery store for like half an hour because our driver was like kind of sus. And anyway. Let's start with the good stuff. Okay, anyway, the trip was incredible. Where did you go? It was, so we went to Tulum, okay. which I have never been to before. And I've heard rave reviews. Um, and it was, so I feel like Tulum is more common. I feel like of when you live on the East coast, yeah. you just go straight down. So only about three hours, yeah. but kind of far. It was like five. It was, it was further than I thought it was going to be from LA. And the drive once you get there. And the drive once you get there. No, so it's Tulum convenient. has an international airport, I guess, but there's not a ton of flights. So we yeah. flew into Cancun and, um, I guess the drive doesn't phase me too much because when I land in Toronto to go home, I have an hour, hour and a half drive to get to my hometown in St. Catharines. So like travel for some reason, I've just tacked on that padding of like, there's more travel once I'm off the plane. I guess, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, it was it was amazing. So Birdie Gray, um, I'm doing a little capsule collection with them, which is a bridal brand. They are known for doing... Um, bridal party dresses and they've got like a great system. So I'm doing a little white dress collection. And so they were a sponsor of the trip and 
my God, the house that they sponsored us to stay in was fucking incredible. This thing was stunning. And I feel like that's what Tulum is known for. Tulum and Bali both like have some amazing new builds because it's just like growing so fast and like the travel economy is a boom in there. Um, but we, it felt like we were staying at a private resort. And then within the house, they have like a concierge service. So when we wanted to go somewhere, like it was, we still had to pay for it every time we wanted to like right. use their driver, but they had a driver kind of on call. Um, and, and then- I assume they have multiple properties that they- Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think that they um, kind of like uh, host for. And then we also had um, a private chef if you wanted it. Again, like you still pay for the service, but they have someone that they use that come to the house and they were so amazing. They were so sweet. Literally eating breakfast this morning. I was like, I miss our chef. Was it, was it an Airbnb or what was yeah, it? Okay. Yeah, it was an Airbnb. See, I it's a like, rental property. I feel like it makes sense though. Cause if you're the owner of the Airbnb mm -hmm. and you want people to have a great experience. Yeah. You're only going to send people who are going to do a good enough job right. for you to have a good like rating at the end of the stay. Oh, rave review. Like, if you had found the chef and they sucked, but they had nothing to do with like with the, the house. house. Yeah. No, they literally were like, he is the gem. He is the jewel of the house. And, and, and they did, they did, they, they did not miss the mark. He was incredible. Yeah. Um, we also had security, which was nice. So there was 24 hour security, like oh. a night person and a daytime person. And it was like fully like camera as well too. So oh, camera camera okay. as well. Yeah. Just like our home. <laughs> And um, we're, in a, we're, we're in several camera systems. We are in a camera system and it was, it was so good. It was so fun. I'm just so lucky that I have a kind, collected this group of amazing friends over like different chapters of my life. And everyone gets along. Like literally I was worried about so many like different like logistic things um, as part of the trip, but there was not a single ounce of me that was worried about people not getting along or there being conflict within the girls, even though um, I'm pretty sure almost everyone had met each other at some point yeah. um, in, you know, our friendships. But, um, you know, there were some people like my friend Danny from Toronto. She obviously is not around in LA to like hang out with everyone. But there was just like not an ounce of me that was worried about um, conflict within the different friends. And I feel like not everyone can say that. And so I'm just so eternally fucking grateful for having good friends. Oh my God. No, seriously. I like, oh, no, I literally I'm, could I'm laughing stop. because it's like, I remember the constant ebb and flow of like, how am I going to get all of these frat stars and acapella singers to not hate each other throughout right, the evening? Right, right. And some, you know, moments of, of oh, wow, that was fine. Oh yeah, a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of that. No, they're just all such good people. And I'm so lucky to have collected. I feel like I've like collected my little Pokemons, you know, throughout the years. And I've got such a nice little group of friends and I'm so lucky. I I feel like good friends are like a, a necessity for like healthy outlook. Oh my God. It's literally like the, one of the sole reasons that I feel like I get to be the person that I am. Wow. Like having good people around you, it makes, it makes such a big having difference. Having shit people around you is a real problem. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it is, there's, it's such a, like an intense correlation between the two, I feel like. Yeah. And I'm just so lucky. And I feel like everyone getting along so well and being so similar. Also, it just, for me as someone, you know, like as I've collected my little Pokemons, I'm like, I did a, I did a pretty okay job here. Yeah, gotta everyone, catch them all. Everyone, no, I don't want to catch them all. I oh. just want to catch, I just want to catch the ones that are good for me. Okay. And well, right for me. So, uh, Tulum. Mm -hmm. You hadn't been. Hadn't been. Was it what you expected? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I think so. What did you expect? I, I like touristy, touristy vacation hotspot. Yeah. And that's definitely what it was. Like when we went down to like a little beach club and the restaurant and stuff, um, it definitely was like we, so the restaurant that we went to, um, I found via TikTok and then cross-checked reviews on Yelp. You're also going probably the beginning of spring break season. Beginning of peak season for yeah. sure. And I'm not kidding. There were probably seven to 10 different bachelorette groups at this restaurant. Was there any bachelor groups there? No bachelor groups actually. It doesn't seem like a, a spot that like a bachelor weekend would head to. Would go to? Yeah. yeah. More of a Mexico city thing. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, actually you're so right. I didn't yeah. see any bachelor groups. Yeah. Um, we did share the car one day with a group on a bachelor trip though, because they did in fact leave like 20 bajillion cans of Corona in the car. And like the guy was already late picking us up. So we didn't have a chance to like clean I'm, up the car. I'd like to apologize for men. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, not accepted. It was, it was really gross. But yeah, there was probably 10 different groups and we were like, you would walk in, like girls would walk in and it was like, okay, there's the bride and they've got their theme for the night of like gl- glitter dresses. And then you've got these girls who have their, their pink dresses and then you've got the bride and our sunset color dresses, which we ended up doing Saturday night. We didn't do like a theme or anything for the first um, restaurant dinner. And what was so crazy is that they um, are so, okay, so they searched, I've never had my bag searched more thoroughly than I have mm. going into this restaurant. Like yeah. not a single sports event, not a music festival, an airport. Like, like what, what do you mean? Like, I mean that they pulled out every card in my wallet looking in between 100% for little baggies of drugs, 100%. They went through every single pocket. They took off the phone case of one of the girl's phones because we come to find out there's got to be, and again, this is speculation. This is me drawing conclusions. So this is not confirmed. Jumping to conclusions? But there was like a house drug dealer at this restaurant. At the restaurant? At the restaurant. So there was a guy who had, who like was dressed really nice. Yep. And he floated around the entire evening. The drug concierge. The drug concierge. And he would ask, Everyone on their way to the bathroom, if you were by yourself or in just like a pair of two, like not a large group, if you want to buy cocaine. Uh, only cocaine. Only cocaine. But just, I bet if you I bet if you asked for something else, I'm sure he could point you in the direction. I'm now maybe I, I'm just b- being bold here, but I don't know how many people I've met who are mixing dinner with cocaine. Yeah, it was eight o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like- But a, I, I think it's like, maybe like this is where if you were going to go out later, you would be like, oh yeah, the house you know, restaurant this cocaine is guy. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, like you're just prepping for your evening. Was there a menu? Uh, no. I, also, I, 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 um, I, I was- I would have had so many questions. Yeah. yeah. I, I know you would have. Yeah. I would have had so many questions. Like, so, is there a menu? How flexible is it? If I want to order off that, is it a la carte? Are they pre-sized? Well, what are my the options? the only person from our table that got asked twice was Mia. The drug dealer, I'm sure, looked at her tattoos and was like, yes, of course, this tattooed woman would be interested in what I'm selling. Uh, yeah, I just like, can I get the chicken breast, two of those? Yeah, can I get the, can I actually get a whey protein shake and I just, It's a an interesting breast? combo. Yeah. And then the other polarizing moment of this restaurant, and this restaurant had such great reviews. The food was incre- incredible. It was called Rosa Negra and it was on like the main Tulum strip. Um, so good, 10 out of 10. Um, but I went to order a glass of champagne or Prosecco. Oh my God, wait, Lauren. I just Googled the place. There is 1000% a cocaine <gasps> bartender. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it says? Yeah. What do you mean? Um, cocaine bartender. That between is the so restaurant funny. and the dancing area was a drug dealer who in front of the restaurant staff offered us cocaine. Oh yeah, yeah. And he could was- deliver it to our table. Yes, 100%. iffy about the whole custom beauty wave, you are not alone. I feel like I'm always getting targeted for products that will fix my dry scalp with their custom product or give me ultra hydrated skin in the dry months of winter, the very severe dry winter of Los Angeles. It can sometimes feel hard to trust all of these promises, but when pro says custom, they actually mean it. It's no gimmick. Your formula couldn't exist without you. Each and every bottle of pro's custom hair and skincare is made to order and personalize with a unique blend of naturally powerful and effective ingredients to meet your needs. Their in-depth consultation analyzes over 80 factors for a complete view of your life and beauty goals. They even take an account where you live by looking at your zip code. This is so crucial because if you live in LA, you know how hard water, like not difficult water, like literally hard water can be a nightmare for your hair and skin. So having something personalized based on the environmental factors around me is next level customization. Your very own formula is crafted once you click ordered. The pros difference, handpicked blends super specific to your needs. It literally doesn't exist before you ask for it. In a third party, a double blind dermatologist supervised controlled clinical study, AKA the gold standard in research studies, pros prove that personalization works better than off the shelf alternatives. This should not come as a surprise, but now you know that there is a study to back it up. After I started using pros, I immediately noticed a difference in how shiny and smooth my hair became. I have been loving the results and I'm so glad I made pros a part of my hair care routine. Try it for yourself and get your healthiest hair in 30 days or your money back. Pros is so confident that you'll love your results that they're offering our listeners an exclusive trial offer so you can see the difference custom hair care can make. 
50% off your first subscription order at pros.com slash wild. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash wild for your free consultation and 50% off your one of a kind formulas. Pros.com slash wild. DraftKings Casino is bringing you only the best classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots, plus exclusive games you won't find anywhere else. Tilly's already know, I love DraftKings. I've talked about my love for roulette before. And DraftKings lets me take it from the casino to the living room, playing one of my favorite games on the couch with my dogs without the smell of a smoky casino. What could literally be better than that? Download the DraftKings Casino app now and use code WT9. New players get an instant deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. That's code WT9 only on DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccbg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One Purdue customer. Must opt in and make a minimum $5 deposit within seven days, 168 hours of registering new account. Max. Match $100 in casino credits, which require one-time pay through within seven days, 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash new player offer 2024. Also, two years ago, two Fuck people him. were killed in the middle of the restaurant. Oh! <laughs> okay. Oh! Oh, man, rest in peace. Oh, my God. So, obviously, I didn't read too deep into the Yelp reviews. <laughs> but, yeah, no, no, it was in front. That's why I'm saying he, I know that he was just, like, the, the house dealer. Because yeah, I mean- they, they search you in case you have anything because they toss it so that you have to buy it from their house person. Right, it's not like you're in trouble. And he also didn't look sus. I mean, he looked, he, he looked less like, let's be so clear, he was selling drugs, but like he was dressed really nice and he fit in with like the wait I think, staff. I think those are the individuals who can make a career out of it. Yeah, no, for sure. And then um, I, so I wanted to order a glass of champagne and um, the waiter was like, oh, sorry, like we only do it by the bottle, da, 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 whatever. He's like, but you can go to the bathroom and get it from the bathroom. And so I thought he was fucking with me and that he just meant like- Okay, he, there's no way he said it that way. Yeah. Really? He's just, like, you, oh, can go, you can go into the bathroom. Got it. And. And so I was like, ah, okay, I'll get a spicy margarita. And <laughs> just like, just carried on. Um, Cause I thought he was just, uh, he meant like, I thought he was making like a joke, like toilet water or something. Maybe he doesn't like champagne. And I was like, okay, <laughs> hater, but whatever. And it wasn't until an hour later that I go into the bathroom and there was literally a champagne lady there who gi- is giving out free glasses of champagne in the bathroom, which again, not probably the most um, hygienic yeah. thing to do. I think do. health code might be a little different in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was kind of around the corner. Like you you open the door and there she was, like the champagne lady, the free champagne lady. And then you right. walk around the corner and it was to the bathroom. But now looking back, I probably did have poop particles on my glass of champagne. You because did. you know that I was down with that bathroom champagne. I was really curious as to where we were going <laughs> with that. Yeah. Um, okay. And so uh, you would rate that place a, Good experience? Yeah, I had a oh. great time. Be be aware of the house cocaine drug dealer um, and and prepare yourself for some free bathroom Reminds champagne. Reminds me of that time that you got um, checked before going into Coachella, into Coachella and they pulled out your your single- the sketchiest your single, bag. Well, your single prescription <laughs> bottle that had yours, mine, and everybody else's just some, all also inside. Some Pepto, some Tums, everything's color, covered in dust. Yeah, and it was like- I didn't even try to make an excuse for it. I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. This is our mix. This is our mix. Our collective mixed bag of prescription drugs. And the guy was like, You can't. We can't. And I was like, But it's just, it's just Pepto and a, the tiniest little bit of, of like, uh, uh, to reduce my heart rate in I case like, I get really anxious. It's my Adderall too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we had to throw that out. That's okay. But um, no, I, I was not carrying any kind of mixed. I did have actually a bottle of Pepto. I think in my bag, but he let me keep that. Wow. I'm actually surprised that he didn't check inside the bottle of the Pepto. Now that I'm thinking See, that's, back, that's the that's where it should have gone. Yeah, yeah. If I was gonna smuggle drugs, but smuggle what? What? What liquid? Oh no no no! A Pepto pills. Oh, I had Pepto pills in my bag, so now I'm I'm like, wait, that would have been a way more yeah nonchalant place. Yeah, I I feel like there's some tampon trickery that can go on too. Yeah, I do know some some individuals who have smuggled some some uh, drugs. Well, in, Go on. In uh, pads. Pads? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because that's like, if you get a guy that's checking the stuff, 
He's not checking. That. Oh, he's not digging underneath the tampon and uh, gonna no. unroll the pad. No, that's a hate yeah, crime. Yeah, there's, there's no hate way. Crime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Th that's that's for sure a hate crime. So, anyways, that was our first full day, and it was wonderful. Oh my god! Also, they served us. We we got this tomahawk steak, and on the side of the tomahawk steak, you got a potato side. And for the first time in my entire fucking life, I got served a potato in the shape of a capybara. And I literally, we all sat there and we're like, who the fuck called ahead? Who called ahead and requested a capybara stamped potato a piece? Like, I don't, I don't even know what it was. It was kind of like a hash brown, but not, but just like a potato, golden that, potato capybara. But is that how they always come? I have no idea. You didn't ask? No, I really didn't. There was a lot going on, okay? You, we were being asked if we wanted to buy cocaine. I was getting champagne, toilet, drinks, and, and then capybaras were being served. There was a lot going on. It's very Lord how I evening. I couldn't believe it. Bathroom I, champagne and, and, and potato a, cappies. A, a potato cappies. Night made. Night absolutely made. Okay. Um, but yeah, great, great day. Uh, the next day we went to a beach. Oh, we also got approached at this restaurant and this guy comes up and he was like, um, he was like, hey, tomorrow free table and no minimum, no drink minimum, hands me a wristband. And so like me just being like, I don't know, walls up. I'm like, no, 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 like nothing, nothing. What's funny is you say that walls up. I feel like you are constantly, oh, okay, great. Like, of course I'll accept this. Where do I sign? And I'm like, well, hold on. I feel Why? like I was just like taught, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm in, I'm just, just with girls, you know? And I don't know, I just, I just feel like the answer should be no. Also, again, I had already said no to what I thought was toilet water drink and I had said no to cocaine, okay? So I, my mindset was in, in the vein of no right now. Okay. You, were, you were in the no mode. I, I was in it. no mode, I was I in no it. mode. And then he, he kind of looked at me and he was like, free. And I was like, oh, I do love free. I, do, I am interested, mm. I am quite interested in free. And I was like, tell me again. And he was like, free table, free cabana, no drink minimum, come to the beach club tomorrow. And I was like, free? Free. Free? Free. I, I mean, I, I probably would have been the same. I've been like, nah. I was like, yeah, what's the trick? What's, 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 right. the, what's the catch? What's the catch? And then even before we got into the car, I called ahead and I was like, hey, I was like some promoter vibe dude from the restaurant gave us a wristband last night. Like, is this actually? And they're like, yes, come, come. And I was like, okay. And then we get there, I hand them the wristband and they're like, yes, great. They give us the nicest cabana at the, at the location. And I would have loved if like, I just showed up with a bunch of dudes, but with your wristband. I'm like, right. We got this last They're night. They're like, oh wait, hang on a second. This isn't. And like, I totally get that. Like, you know, a promoter's job is to bring little girly pops to the club. I get it. I totally get it. And you listen, know. do I want to be a girly pop that goes places for free? As long as I'm in, I'm in, it's not in danger. Yes, absolutely. I love free. You, you're a big fan of free. Free is my favorite. Yeah, it is. Um, And then it ended up being the biggest vibe ever. It was great. We were like in the shade. We got drinks and snackies. We walked the beach. I mean, the fact that you were able to get a like cabana the day before, pretty impressive. Free. Also that. Free. Okay. So what else happened? I couldn't believe it. Um, and then we had our, oh, and then that was the day that my friend surprised me with um, a, like the cutest little bridal, same penis forever balloon set up with like matching glasses and a little robe. And so to get me downstairs in a, um, for this like surprise, I was doing my makeup and I was sharing a room with Danny and she was kind of awkwardly sitting on the bed, but I was like charging her phone. She's just hanging out. She's already ready. She's just like chilling. But in my mind, I kind of was like this, what was she doing back here? But I, there was like no- You clocked it, didn't you? I was just like, what is she doing? But other than that, it wasn't like, oh, there's something going on. Like there was no vibes of that because everyone was getting ready because Birdie Gray was sending their photographer because I had to do some like brand photos before the brand dinner. And um, so to get me downstairs, Kelsey lets out the most blood curdling scream from downstairs. And um, so I hear that and I was like, oh my God, Kelsey, are you okay? And she's like, come downstairs, come downstairs. And so in my mind, I'm envisioning, cause we had these like floating wood stairs that have no railing. And I'm envisioning, I don't know what this is. We could never have that. Oh, we could never have that. Also- Diggy would walk off the top step dead, daily. Dead, literally daily. dead, day one. Yes, 100%. I don't, I, don't know, I don't think it would ever kill him. I think he would be fine, <laughs> but he would do it every day. <laughs> every single day. <laughs> um, and you no, know, like the way that we had to have carpet installed on our very normal safe stairs for them they're is- They're slippy. They are slippy. And it's, it's really just for Diggy. It's really- He just doesn't not- he doesn't, I mean, he They're just slippy, gets, he's got yeah. slippy feet. 
Um, so Kelsey lets out the most blood curdling scream. And so I, this is so specific. Again, very visual brain over here. I'm envisioning for some reason, her leg has gone through the step and the stairs have shattered into, and her leg is being splintered from both sides and blood splurting everywhere. So that's what your, your brain naturally rose to. Yes. Wow. In my mind, sprinting down the stairs. And so I'm mid makeup, okay? And part of the makeup routine is contour, okay? Right. So you do a little swipe on the cheekbone. You mm -hmm. do a little swipe along the temples. Yeah. You do a little slight swipe along the jawbone. You're jaw acting bone. like I don't have TikTok. You know what? I watched a little bit of your TikTok today. Jeremy had like a skit from an IT man who was closing a ticket. That's someone, and I was like, oh, our TikToks are very different. So, you know, based on that, I actually don't know if you do know about the jaw contour. Okay. And so I'm running down the stairs, blending my jaw contour out as the, everyone's got their cameras out. And it was very, very cute. And I would have loved maybe six more minutes, but that's okay. It was an amazing moment. And I, I truly expected just nothing of my friends, like to, for them to give me their time is more than anything I could have asked for. I mean- isn't it kind of crazy, like the older you get, just how yes. valuable a, oh, week, a, a weekend becomes? Most of us are in our 30s at this point. And yeah. so for everyone to give me five days, like we had three full days and two travel days, like for everyone to give me five days of their weekend and their time is the most valuable part of, of you know, so many of their lives. Like the, the, the thought of like an unplanned weekend trip stresses me the fuck out now. Oh my God, yeah, there's no way we'd be like, should we just go somewhere this weekend? Yeah. Should we just go somewhere? I'm sure we have nothing else that we need to be doing. Yeah, yeah. so right. that's very nice. But yeah, it was so nice. It was so nice and I had to suck back my tears because I had to take photos in like 20 minutes, but it was very, very sweet. And so we had a great dinner. Again, the chef knocked it out of the freaking park every, with every meal. Literally, it was three course meals, three times a day, basically. I've never eaten so much in my entire life. Like when somebody else is preparing group sized meals too, it's like, Everything's just- Everything was large. Yeah. And everything was delicious and it was great. The next day we did a little snorkel and cenote excursion, which was incredible. Literally the most wholesome trip ever. I feel like half of it, more than half of us didn't drink at all um, because a couple girls, it's like a trigger for their migraines. Um, one girl is just fully sober and um, yeah, so we just like, it wasn't, it just like wasn't that kind of weekend. Like we literally finished Saturday night by like making bracelets and watching Step Up. And it was so wholesome. My favorite combo. I know, my favorite um, combo. I also learned what a sublito was. I would have thought it was a grotto. Yeah, we learned the difference between a cenote and a grotto. And no, because- Charlie, Did you know this? This is an educational no, podcast. Yeah, so- Here we go. Uh, us, us, us simple-minded people would have confused a grotto with a cenote. I would never know what a cenote, or sorry, what a grotto was. I feel like I, I've been in a cenote before. You, so you're telling me that you've got cenote experience. I've got, I do have a little cenote experience. Shit, all right. I went in with my parents one time and that water is always fucking so cold. Yeah. Okay, a cenote is a deep natural well or sinkhole, especially in Central America, formed by the collapse of surface limestone that exposes groundwater underneath and sometimes used by the ancient Mayans for sacrificial offerings while grotto is just a small cave. Um, grotto, small cave, an artificial cavern-like retreat, a Marian, Marian shrine usually built in a cavern-like structure. Not Mayan, Marian? Marian, M-A-R-I-A-N, Marian Shrine. Outside Again, this scope. is kind of an educational Outside podcast, but not yeah. all the way. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. Um, You're not gonna commit to actually teaching anybody anything. You're just gonna say things. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll pop a little video in so you guys can see, but it was absolutely stunning. Yeah. Stalag mites, stalag tights. Stalag tight from the ceiling. I know what you're trying to say, yeah. Stalag mites yeah. from the ground. Yeah. Oh. The, the pointies. Wait, might and tight are different? Might and tight are different. Mites come from the ground, stalag tights come from the top. T t tights from the top. Tights from the top. I get it now. Okay. And so are there, like, so is that like only in Central America? Do we have those? Uh, I'm asking the wrong. It's, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> Moving on. I feel like I delivered enough yeah, of, no, I, of I the Cenote it. education yeah. for one podcast, to That's be fine. completely yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, and then we came home and it was truly wonderful. We, Mia got a little bit seasick in the actual water though, not even on the boat. She got, she got a little sick from the motion of the like ocean. Like literal, like in the sea being sick. Literally in the sea being sick. Yes. They go, where are you going? They go, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've never heard of anyone being sick like while they're in the water. I did a nighttime excursion where you kind of just float in the water and look at um, giant manta rays. That's your dream. 
Or no, manatees. I love manatees. Yeah. I love manatees. I was so sad. Manatees and um, whale sharks are in Tulum, but not in season right I just now. just grabbed the penis I with my full hand. watched it happen over here. And I was like, oh, oh that's direct contact. He's a good boy. Um, but I think that I would lose my fucking mind if I saw a manatee or a whale shark. Have you, um, just a re- reminder for anyone who forgets, you do have the most impressive animal recall. Do you have a list of... Like your, your, you know, everyone has a bucket list. Yeah. Do you have a list of animals that you must see in real life before it's all over? Before it's all over? Yeah. What a fucked up way to say before you die. Um, I would, well, I feel like we knocked out Capybara. Right. Um, I would love to see a whale shark. A whale shark. A okay. whale shark. That's, that's high up there for me. Why? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Does it, does it look like it needs help? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the common denominator of all the animals you love. <laughs> If you just look at them with no context, it looks like it needs help. No matter, even if it's in its natural habitat. Right, like lions and tigers and and, and don't really like do bears it for me. Bears, oh my, yeah. No, I do, I do like bears. Right, but you like the ones that look like they- they need help. Right, like they're hungry yeah. and they don't want to hunt, despite the fact that if they were to just hunt, they could right. kill anything. Right. Right, like if, if, a, if a jaguar or a cougar or a menacing, you know, uh, whatever, mm-hmm. didn't really feel like getting up that day, and hadn't got up the last couple of days and was just kind of sitting around or had eaten too much. Oh, right, they become much more cute. Yes. yes. Like, what's the, the- Oh, Tank. Tank, the overweight tiger? Yes, no, no, he's not a tiger. He is a, I think a jaguar maybe? It's like Sammy, Safari Sammy on TikTok. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, so I, I just assume that a whale shark has a face that needs help. Maybe. Okay. Um, are there any minerals in, oh, look how cute he is. Okay. You know what, Finding Nemo also did a great job of personifying, I feel like a whale shark into a personality that was very lovable. Do you, you don't want to kiss him though, do you? I would totally give him a smooch had I had the opportunity. Shoshana, have we discussed this? Discussed what? Lauren's fascination with animal lips. Okay, this is a great segment. Lauren, what's an animal that you would not kiss? A monkey, wouldn't kiss any of the monkey species. I, I, this is, this is a potentially a little controversial hot take, but I will, I refuse to watch or look at any monkey content. I will skip their, their, their exhibits at any animal sanctuary of any kind. Like when I, I, when I took refuse. one to the, to the zoo, I had to make it very clear to them ahead of time. No surprises could involve primates. Yes. I'm, I'm so wildly You're monkey adverse. I am monkey adverse, 100%. Yeah. I think they're so fucking creepy. I think they're too close to human DNA and I don't like watching them move like humans, but not being a human. Like, There's something so deeply it was the unsettling. Eyes that you didn't like. No, it, it's the eyes, but it's also just the mannerisms. Like everything they do is so human-like that it's so weird that they're just like, you know, one little drop off of being a full human. I was gonna say, what, what, how are you gonna refer to this scientifically? Um, yeah, no, okay, what else though? It's There's deeply unsettling. Um, there, I mean, there might be some, some reptiles that I might not be interested in. Okay. But find, find, find like a crocodile. That's just like a little chubby. Probably an alligator. Listen. <laughs> Why? Not a crocodile. Why are they? There, I think, I think like, like the American alligator. Yeah. I think is basically like a frog with teeth. What? What? I, I'm pretty sure that's what Steve Irwin literally said. I think he said the American alligator is like a frog with teeth. Look it up. A frog with teeth? I think he said that. Like as in like their mannerisms and their personalities? Like the, they're not as dangerous as- I'm gonna as, be honest, that sounds like what the people say at SeaWorld and then the orcas like kill them. Yeah. Okay, did retaliate. you look it up? Did it, did, did it? Um, yeah, 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 Steve Irwin did say <gasps> the American alligator is a frog with teeth. In terms of what though? Like what, what does he mean by that? I guess they're afraid of humans. See a frog with teeth. Like, like they're not like da- they're not trying to like kill somebody. Right. Like they don't see somebody and just like polar bear. The you're dead. alligator. Yeah. Huh. The, the the American alligator. The American alligator. I don't know if there's a difference between the. So American you're saying variety. that I could smooch an American alligator. Is what you're saying. If you were going to smooch one, don't make it a crocodile. I think crocodiles are going to, are just going to kill you. Have you seen the videos of the crocodiles doing their like bellow where it like vibrates the water? Oh, for mating, right? Yeah, for mating, and it's it, they it's giving dinosaur. When I mean, they, whenever they do that, I'm like, oh, so you're you're a prehistoric animal. I mean, crocodiles for sure are alligators, whichever one, definitely have some prehistoric vibes. And then there's that um, that I just learned about this thing that lives only on the bottom of the ocean. That's actually like thousands of different organisms that all just get together and keep building out one. Huh? Hold oh, on. I would smooch him. <laughs> that's an American See, alligator. Like, <laughs> like Lauren would look at that. 
end, especially because he's like tubby in the middle. <laughs> yeah, he's a little tubby. That that's perfect. He's got for a cute her. little snoot. Uh, um, all right, I'm gonna look this up what, for real quick. Uh, um, what um, are you talking about? Hold on. I thought you were going in the direction of like a blobfish or something. A blobfish. Yeah. A siphonor. Si uh, yes. Siphona siphonophore. The common house siphonophore. <laughs> it's S I show it's S I P H O N. Siphon. Uh huh. A four. Uh, I, I got o it. Yeah. And they found one in Japan that like looks like an alien, like in the nineties. And they're still alive. Pull this up. Look at this thing. It's fucking crazy. Actually, I know for a fact Why? you would not kiss it. That I wouldn't kiss it. No. Is it an animal? Is it that? Yeah. What the shit is yeah. that? No, no, no. Pull up a video of it like on the bottom of the ocean. That looks okay. like a uterus on, on its head. <laughs> I don't know the female anatomy enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to know about the uterus. Yeah. No, but like when you see it in a video, it like, it, um, Ew. it's, it's, it's the mo it's the most alien looking thing I've ever seen. What in the Yeah, look at it. Fuck is that thing? Hang on, where's its head? I'm confused. Is it an animal or like an organism? It no? looks like a clump of seaweed. I don't think we know much about Yeah, look at it. Ew, I hate it's that. It's like translucent. Hang on a second. What the fuck is going on here? Ew! Is it like, what family is this thing in? Is it like an eel? It looks like a boho eel with a tassel. Boho <laughs> eel is crazy. Yo. <laughs> Yo. We got to get this in the eel pit right now. Oh, I gotta get this in the eel pit. If oh my God. I think it stings. I think it stings. So we can't, I don't know if we, well, eel sting. They've got. Yeah, eel sting. Maybe they're friends. Oh my God. On our snorkel expedition, we saw a four foot stingray. That's it was scary. Huge. But stingrays are pretty chill, right? Yeah, they're super chill. Like they don't fuck with you unless you fuck with them. Like there's something called like a stingray shuffle where people, when you walk through water. And then a stingray shuffle. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, <laughs> where you shuffle your feet as you walk along. Like if you walk walking oh, in sand. Oh, you don't step on one. Yes, you don't step on one. Cause that's when they will sting you is if you step on one. Right, because right, they're obviously right. feel, they're like, oh shit, I'm being fucking stepped on. It was a stingray on. that killed Steve Irwin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Through his heart, right? Through his heart. Yeah. I think he was maybe swimming with different stingrays than I was swimming with yesterday. Right. The saddest <laughs> part about ago. that is just like how sad I know Steve would be if he if he knew that people knew an animal killed him. Yeah. You know that that's the, like the, the part. But about also, I feel like he that's probably like he would want to go at the hand or the barb of an animal. <sighs> um. On a ha on a different note. Um. <laughs> how many feet long do you guys think a siphonophore could grow to? Fourteen. <gasps> I'm gonna like Lauren guess. Six. Bigger. Think big guys. The biggest one they ever found. 65. 30. 130 feet. Oh. Longer than a blue whale. Come on, boho eel. <laughs> boho eel's out You better here. work. And, and did we, did we figure, is it an animal or an organism? It's a collection of zooids. It's giving, huh. it doesn't have a head. If, Does it poop? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> oh, I love I mean, it. When you think about things, it, they really do fall into two no, categories. No, it's like, does it have a head? Does, it, does it poop? Like, does it eat and does it poop? Honestly, does it poop? Yeah. Does. <laughs> Safana for Progress Rex poop. How the hell? Oh, I found a Reddit thread. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Reddit always knows. Actually, that's incredibly untrue. I want to correct that right now. Reddit <laughs> does not fucking know. That's Reddit not true. doesn't know shit. No, I, when I want to find niche information, yeah. like niche, sometimes I go to Reddit. Sometimes. The types of things I want to find out are all on Reddit. Reddit nerds yeah. are typically correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is past our education oh, status. No. But if we've got like a marine biologist, yeah, who feel wants free to come let us on. know if they if if the Safana Force Rex poops. I do not think they poop. Well, I mean that's probably why they they grow to 130 feet then. Right, because instead they're of just they're on. just adding Except, on. Wait, they must poop because apparently they have a digestive system. I don't know. If they have a digestive system, that means they have to they have to expel something. But it might just be like a, a, a an just, outer and, layer. Did or you see that of, shit that was following him, literally? Yeah, that was his boho tassels. Wait, are his we are fringe. we assuming gender? I don't know if we can assume <laughs> gender on this. They are asexual. He gives asexual. <laughs> <laughs> they, they. I said they. I said they. No, no, no. Lauren didn't. I was just correcting her. That's but like that is to me the creepiest looking thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I hate that. It's it's incredibly unsettling. No kisses. No you know kisses. what? It doesn't really need help. 
It, you know, it looks like it, it's- It is fine. In fact- It's growing to 120 feet, it's fine. That, in fact, things at the bottom of the ocean are the opposite of needing help. Yeah, because they've been living in the darkness and the depths of like a Mariana's Trench for so long. <laughs> Mariana's Trench, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's where he lives. He lives in Mariana. Yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. Yeah. It's, like, it's like when you like get <laughs> like get to campus and like, oh, you're at Mariana? Okay, great. Yeah, that's where he is. Okay, <laughs> so is Mariana. there any other like, uh, you would want to kiss a polar bear, but it wouldn't kiss you back? No, he'd probably eat me. Yep. Yeah. And then if, I guess if you could kiss any, if you could kiss any other animal that's actually scary, but you, you would like to see a non-scary version of it, what would it be? Oh my God, this is an impossible question. There's so many. Um... Um, give me, give me some animals. I'll just tell you yes or no when I smooch them. Um, a bonobo. Bonobo, absolutely not. Again, nothing in the monkey family. I want to be so far away. Platypus, yes. Ew. Um, 100%. Uh, I had a beanie baby that was a platypus growing up. It was purple. And I'm pretty sure half of our generation probably also had this purple platypus beanie baby. Blue so, ribbon pig. What the fuck is a blue ribbon pig? Do, doesn't, don't, it, if you, I think if you show pigs. This is the most Midwestern thing you've uh, can you look up blue ribbon pig, please? Podcast. I think when, like when you show pigs, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. But that's, yeah, oh. when you show pigs, when you show pigs, if, if they get first place, hmm. they get a blue. Yes, that. Oh, that looks like Digo. See, damn it, Warren. That one looked like Digo. Oh, God, <laughs> that one was so cute. The way he's standing is so cute. But anyway, it's a blue ribbon pig. Wow, I was like, what? I was like, wow, that, that's so rare of you to like you know can a take specific the boy species. out of the Midwest, my love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm from there. Uh, wow. And I love bacon, so. Uh, so you would, you would kiss a blue ribbon pig? Yes. I'm, I'm good on this question. Okay. I, I'm good on this. All yeah. Right. yeah, the answer is typically yes. If you ever uh, say, I'm not interested in kissing you right now, I, right. I must be, I, I must have pissed you off pretty bad. Well, you don't need help. So you're fine. <laughs> Got it. You're fine. If that's how we're, if that's how we're categorizing things, you typically don't, you're a pretty independent guy. I, I, even when I need help, I don't want help. It's so true, right? Yeah, so I, I basically have to force help upon you. Right. Um. Oh my fucking God, I finished. I, you don't have anything to contribute to this. I'm so sorry. So you can just just hang for this segment um, and contribute with your presence. Um. I finished the Akatar series and it was the best book series wait, I have ever read in my entire wait, life. Wait, wait, show. Do you have the, the, the TikTok I sent you? I do, you want me to pull it up? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. is sponsored by BetterHelp. The first thing I would do with an extra hour in the day is um, probably read my fairy <laughs> books <laughs> or, or my new book about dragons, my newest one, big fan. Uh, when I'm having a busy day or week or month, I feel like I've just got no time to do something for me. I tend to experience burnout and that is where therapy steps in. A lot of our lives spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? Reading. The best way to squeeze that special thing <clears throat> into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Prioritizing personal time is essential for maintaining balance and well-being. Without it, we can feel quickly overwhelmed, affecting our overall happiness and productivity. Therapy helps in identifying what truly matters to us, separating meaningful activities from daily noise. It guides us in setting priorities and establishing boundaries, making it easier to dedicate time to what's genuinely important. Through therapy, we learn to manage our time effectively, ensuring that our lives reflect our true values and goals. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash WT9. I'm in a relationship with not just Lauren, I think I'm in a relationship with an archetype because yes. this person that I, I've stumbled upon. We are all reading Akatar. Not only is she a 31 year old female. Yes. Like she, she has all of the characteristics that you have, that have you have made your personality as of late. I am not an original. I want to be so clear. Like, right. This generation, we are copy paste. Right, right, yeah. As as girls move from like this whole like clean girl aesthetic to the mob wife aesthetic, like we well, are- Sorry, what? When? What? So announcement, clean girl aesthetic apparently is over and the girly pops want to be the mob wife aesthetic. So they're smudging the eyeliner. They're wearing the cheetah print. They're teasing the hair. 
the slick back bun is out. So wait, so were you were you clean girl aesthetic? No, in what world do you think I'm clean? The only thing that did work for me for clean girl is that I did do a slick back bun a few times because you only do that bun when your hair is actually really dirty. Oh. And I love not washing my hair. You do love not washing your hair. And so that was one element that worked. But like, I'm not a girly who's like, I just wear a little tinted sunscreen. Okay. I, I'm not that girl. Okay. I'm not that girl. I never have been and I never will be. Well, I, this TikTok is everything that I think you've established yourself as all synced up in like a two minute period. Oh no, I've never had an original thought in my entire life. Well, just listen, is this not, you? tell me one part of this does not align. No, no, but you. this is, okay. Like, yes, I agree with everything this girl's about to say, but also this is every girl in my generation right now for the most part. Okay. Here's some things I will no longer be doing as a 31 year old woman. Number one, pulling up. Don't text me and ask me to pull up. Facts. I don't, invite me to something. We're not Say, we're going to dinner at seven. Would you like to join? Don't say, what's up? We're here. Pull up. Are we 18? I don't know. That's so vague. We're I need more details. Up. Both of you. Last minute evening plans in general. I don't, no. I have so much in my brain that has to happen in my evenings that involve a rigorous skincare routine and a fairy novel that I'm very invested in. Whoa! And so if you hit me up at 7 p.m. and want to hang out, I, I'm, I'm three sheets deep and the sheets are my bed. I'm snuggled up. My face is oiled. I'm reading. Yeah. Leave me alone. Pretending to be cool girl. I don't want to be the cool girl anymore. I don't want to be like, yeah, whatever, it's no big deal. Sometimes it is a big deal. It's always a big okay? deal. Okay, I got a lot of feelings in this tiny body. <laughs> and guess what? You got to deal with them now in a nice way, respectfully. <laughs> respectfully, I'm not going to be cool cucumbers. Honestly, starting anything after midnight. Absolutely if not. If something starts after midnight, no. nothing it's nothing good is happening there. That's not good for me. I, I can't that. go. Uh, that, it's... I I had finished that and mm -hmm. I, I I just felt weird because it was like I I'm dating a a type of person. Yeah. And it's all of us. Right. You're dating all of us. I mean Congratulations. Honestly, the thing is, if I wasn't if I didn't know you and uh -huh. that came across my TikTok and I saw someone like about a, a fairy novel, I would think that's the most out of pocket weird mm -hmm. thing for mm -hmm. an adult to say. Yeah. And now I feel like I'm adjacent to your Akatar community. Yes. Because now all of my friends I've got Kelsey's boyfriend reading Akatar. He's two book. He's two books deep. Do you think I would like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's just pause here. Why? I think that. Give me three reasons. Uh. Here's the main one. I'll give you one. <laughs> How's has this for compromise? I'll give you one. I. Wait. Actually, no. I have a question first. So when you read Harry Potter, so like, so basically I feel like you've been really concise in your description and like inability to visualize things you haven't seen before. So when you read things like Harry Potter, when they invent mythical things in like a fantasy world, world that aren't real, how does that play out in your mind? Like spells? Any of it, like when they, when they, before the movies, when you read those and they're talking about like the Dementors or like different like beasts and stuff like that. Like, what does that look like in your brain? I feel like I had an easier time visualizing things or even just being comfortable with not knowing what they looked like, but having an idea of it in my head when I was younger. Like, because like mm. I've told you the way that I think about things is like, is like I reference it against what I've seen. Yeah, yeah It's yeah. like cataloging what's already been played. Right. And, and it's not like I have like perfect, like recall of it. Cause some people have like picture perfect could recreate anything. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. But I think I would just think about what the closest in real life substitute would be. Right, right, right. Of castle, right. dragon, right. whatever. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Cause I, I think that so like, I love this series so much because I think the characters were great and the world building of it is so amazing. I'll put it this way. This is a better way to describe what I just said. If you, if I read the, the book or a new book yeah. and you give me a sheet of paper uh -huh. and you said, it's okay if, if you're not a good artist, but like draw a character or whatever, right? that would be like, I would not like whatever I, I attempt to do, uh -huh. I'm just making it up as I go along. There's, I have no, like, there's not anything in my mind that I'm like, oh, I've always thought of it like this. Right, right, I'm right, not right. thinking of it unless I've seen it already. The one thing about Akatar is that because it's so popular, there is so much fan art that the uh, community has kind of decided what people look like. See, like to me, I think this is like the perfect uh, storm for what the future Marvel could be. I mean, again, listen, Hulu, I think you need to maybe drop the series and give it to someone else. Well, Disney owns Marvel. I want HBO or Apple to do it. 
Okay. All right. I know it's a bold statement. So you're, okay. I need this to be. Do you, have you started the Facebook group yet? I need this to be. What's Akatar Reddit like? Oh my God. I don't know. I don't, I don't venture into the world of Reddit, but okay. I, I, I do, I can confirm there are for sure. Do you know what AO3 is? AO3? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So I learned about this from Brittany Broski and Basically, uh, okay, so AO3. Yes. Archive of our own. Um, a fan created, fan run, nonprofit, non-commercial archive for transformative fan words, like fan works, like fan fiction, fan art, fan videos, and podfic. So there are 63,830 fandoms, 6.7 million users, and 12.5 million works of fan, whatever it might be. And- um, And so it's like a place where people post it? Yes. So you know how um, there was, uh, um, what was what was the platform that uh, Twilight was basically written on? Oh. Wattpad, 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 Wattpad. Wattpad. Yes. Wattpad, Wattpad, Wattpad. Wattpad. This is R rated Wattpad. But also not like a, it's a, it's like an organization, right? It's not like a company. Yeah, it's, it, it's right. It's like a, a collective. But I think, but that, I think it's way better for this. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that it's an R rated Wattpad. But uh, Wattpad can be R rated for sure. So take what you think that that is and X -rated. then make it more. So it's just a bunch of like. Yes. Why does everything devolve to that? <laughs> Like I've never thought of fairies as whatever, keep going. Anyway, I finished Akatar and it was the best series that I have ever read in my entire life. Do you want to drop life. your profile? You're like at on, on AO3 right now so people can go no, follow you? No, I'm not, I'm not a strong f uh, writer. Not in, a contributor. In, I'm not a contributor, no, no. I don't, I, I don't contribute um, really on most like forums and threads. Yeah. Like I'm more of like a- A consumer. Uh, I'm, I'm in that, the, the majority that just reads. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, Incredible series. And so to stay in the Sarah J Massiverse or whatever I have, which is downstairs currently, my box set of eight books of her next series, Throne of Glass. <laughs> and so I won't be making social plans for the next two years. Right. Um, because then there's also another series called Crescent City that has three books, I think, that I'll be reading after that. These are all fairy books? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. I haven't I haven't started them yet. And so in between though, as a little breather in between Akatar and Throat of Glass, I read Fourth Wing, which only has two books and the third book coming. The way, the sobs that I sobbed on the plane ride home silently by myself. Oh my fucking God, there is a specific death. Books don't normally make me cry. People responded to so many of my Akatar stories being like, oh my God, I sobbed so, I cried so hard during this book. Is it sad? I, I, I guess I didn't really think so. Like there were no parts, like there were parts where I was like, uh, my heart was racing and my aura ring was, aura ring was like, do you want to track this workout? But like there were, I, there was no, there was at no point where I was overcome with emotion that I had tears running down my face during the all five books of Akatar. Got it. Fourth wing, I, so first, so first of all, I've got a book on my lap. I'm in the middle seat. I've got Maggie on my left. I've got me on my right. A tear drops straight down, <laughs> straight down. Oh no. <laughs> Have I been caught? And I was like, I was like, okay, the plane is dark. I can, I can, I can turn this around. I can turn this around and I keep reading and it gets sadder and sadder and sadder. And I was like, I can't turn this around. I can't turn this around. He's gone. And I turned to Mia. My eyes are puffy and red. There's tears streaming down my face. Row 31 was unwell. I feel like you are um, not the most graceful crier. Crier. <laughs> There have been prettier criers that have existed for sure. Yeah, we, we, yeah. And um, that's just not, uh, again, I don't really get period cramps. Um, my digestive system is okay. We get it, Actually, loving, loving parents, yeah, but we get it. I, I don't, I'm not a cute crier. I'm really not a cute crier. Um, and so I then ordered, the the second book of the series is coming on Thursday. Do you but have I, friends reading this series? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh my God, so many, so Anyone many. Anyone in particular? Like, um, who, who, I'm trying to figure out who else would. Alicia finished Fourth Wing. Her okay. and her sister Ashley are both reading them. Um, Ollie is also reading Fourth Wing. So I actually gave Fourth Wing to Maggie when I finished it on the plane because I started the book on the flight there, mm. or maybe it's like maybe 50 pages in, and I finished the book within two hours of the flight. 
how many words per minute are you up to now? I don't know. Do you feel like you're a better I'm, reader now because you've been reading all these books? No, I don't think so. I used to read a lot. Okay. Like, I feel like, I feel like that kind of just stuck with me. Um, but I, and then Akatar, I feel like all my friends are reading. Kelsey and her boyfriend are reading. Um, Maggie has already read most of the series. You weren't, you were, you didn't finish why I wouldn't like it. Oh, I think it's too smutty. One, I think it's too smutty. Okay. I think that- um, I can't decide if I'm offended or what, what- Actually, also the other thing too is that, remember how when uh, Travis Kelsey had his little meltdown in the field and you were like, mm, that's a red flag. And <laughs> the other half of the girls were like, ooh, no, that's hot. There's lots of moments like that. And the, like these books are written for straight women. Not to say that like other <laughs> sexualities can't enjoy them and right. like other people, but it's definitely written for a certain type of person who might find the Travis Kelsey meltdown a little hot. I'm I'm not even going to, to, to touch that. Yeah. Um, okay. And so I think that is probably enough. You think I'd be made more uncomfortable than I would enjoy the book? I think you'd also be like, you'd be like, that worked? That worked? You making your wings I'm, go really big <laughs> and making shadows rise from the corners, that worked? Wait, how old's the author? Uh, Maybe like 40s. Okay. So she's like, just coming out of her girly pop days? L late 30s? Okay. I mean, girly pop is a mindset. Oh, it is? Yeah. So there's 75 year old girly pops. Girly I pop so. is forever. Girly pop is forever. Okay. What, how old do you think the oldest person that associates or identifies as a girly pop is today? 105. Okay. Yeah, so anyways, that's why I don't think you'd like the books. It's, uh, yeah, you're right. So, okay, but why did you think that Kelsey's boyfriend was gonna like it? We almost had to break up when my toe touched her butthole. You know what I mean? Like you're just a type of person that I feel like is not cut out for this. Listen, I think that there are some things that in each couple, you know, yeah. it's it's unique to that person. This is this is yours. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so glad that you are so supportive. The old Feyre. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I've done that series. It's done. Well, apparently there's gonna be more, thank God. There's, what, there's only five books? Yeah. I mean, how many books do you need? I don't know, more. Okay, well, there's, there's more. I mean, there's not a TV show coming anytime soon or a movie. Yeah, thank God. Uh, okay, well, we've uh, uh, covered all of your niches and your bachelorette party. <laughs> so, okay, so <laughs> uh, overall, anything you do differently or any advice no. you'd give to somebody who's going to do one? Um, I think the, the best thing you can do is have like a healthy balance of downtime mm -hmm and planned things. Um, like a lot of the reviews that I got from friends who were there, who um, have been on lots of bachelor. One of my friends I think has been on eight bachelorettes with her eighth. And she was like, she was like, this is the first bachelorette one that I've been on that no one has gotten into a fight on. Oh, And I was like, oh my God, praise be. Love that, love that for our group, our friend group. Um, but also too, everyone was really down with like the nice balance of chill and it not being so like, go, 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 go. I wanna cram in a bajillion things because like, that's just not my vibe. That's also, not my vibe at all. I feel like the, the, every year after 30, it becomes very, yeah. like I gotta get a, like a, a reset day, yes. a reset hour. Yes, yes. Yeah. I also am someone who is like a frequent eater. And so got a lot of good reviews on my priority, like my pri prioritization of like having proper meals mm -hmm. throughout the day. Cause like, I hate when I'm traveling with someone and they're just like not a breakfast eater. And so they don't like schedule that into like oh, their day. That's the one meal I'm gonna have to have. Yeah. And I'm like, I am, I'm ready to pass out by 1030. Like I'll, I need, I need this to be in the itinerary. I'd commit hate crimes at, at 11 AM if I haven't one, eaten. 100%, yeah. 100%. So I think that um, a good balance of downtime to just like and hang and nourishment and some planned activities that kind of like, you know, span the gamut of, cause we had like, like fun night out. We had like fun little adventure day. We had fun little beach club day. We had like a dinner reservation. We had dinner cooked at home. We made bracelets. I feel like for my bachelor party, we, we had pinned no weenies plans. On, um, on the, the wiener. On the man. We pinned the wiener on the what man. What's it called? Pin the macho on the man? Pin the macho on the man. That's adorable. Yeah. And so I had to do, I'm doing um, a vlog for Birdie Gray mm -hmm. as part of our partnership. And so I was like, I guess I'll put this into the first vlog and the <laughs> second vlog can be the Birdie Gray vlog. I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I think that that's the time to pin the macho on the man. If you're going to pin a macho on the man, it's going to be at the bachelorette party. All right. And I had a great time. I had a great <laughs> did time. You pit, did you get it? I um I did. I did get one of my we all got three chances. We all got three weenies. I got one of my weenies on the I got one of my machos on the man. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh and yeah. 
I, um, they also part of like the Airbnb, they also, um, so much like a hotel had housekeeping come and like tidy up. Oh, and I was like, nice. I bet that she just, it was just, just like, oh, pin these weenies on this man on the window. But I, also here's this like wholesome table of all these beads where they were making bracelets, like wholesome, wholesome trip. I feel like people that are, are cleaning those specific residences are- That's what I'm saying. I'm everything. sure that she has seen the craziest no, shit. They came to the table and they're like, oh, not anal. Got it. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Amazing. I love that for you. Um, but yeah, anyways, a 10 out of 10 trip. I will cherish my memories forever and I will be posting photos for the next three months. <laughs> Got it. You look cute. Thanks, boo. And also your however many day whatever is paying off. My however many way what? Your 60 day, 75, 70. Soft. Yeah. That, yes. That. Yes. That. And as of tomorrow, we are back on. As of tomorrow? Back, back on. on. Yes. Lauren has abs, everyone. I don't know if you saw her Instagram. They, they're they underneath. Not. They're, they're not, they're, they're, they're there. They're slumbering under a light duvet currently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a, a, like a transitional season duvet. Yeah. Seasonal duvet. Yeah, late spring. Yeah. Okay. We're building, but we're just, we're just working with- Well, we gotta keep them comfy. Yeah. Gotta keep them warm. Gotta keep them warm. Okay. Gotta keep them warm and toasty. Well, we'll see you again in a couple of days. Oh Since yeah, that's right, this is a Thursday pod? episode. Yeah. It's not an extra pod, it's a late pod. Late pod, right. It's not a extra. late pod, right. yeah, yeah. So anyways, we'll see you on Tuesday, back to our regular pod schedule. Is that it? Any, yeah. Anyone gonna say bye Yeah, you wanna say bye? <laughs> I was gonna say, that was, that was, babe, I teed you up there. You wanna say bye? Goodbye, Lafayette. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you in a couple of days. <laughs> bye. <laughs>